So, I'm just kind of checking to see if y'all can hear me or see me or what's going on. And if YouTube shuts me off, well then, I'll make sure to get right back on. Because it's doing that to me for the last two live streams. Just uh, kind of herring with me. But, um, I've had kind of an interesting week. And, um... I kind of wanted to talk about it a little bit because some of it's a little heavy and if some of you will bear with me maybe I can um, you know explain a few things because well okay so my um, hey Ricky my earlier this week I had some I'm, first of all, I'm in Asheville, North Carolina. I've been traveling around and um, finishing up some reschedules that were canceled because of COVID. And um, so we've been juggling around and trying to figure out what else we have to do, you know, kind of figure out, you know, those reschedules and what we can and can't play and so on and so forth. Um, and so right now we're in Asheville. And I'm kind of camped out for the night. I'm in the bus. I got Willie's over here crashed out sleeping. See? And um, so I'm just kind of hanging out, having coffee, um, doing some emails, that kind of thing. Uh, but earlier this week, you know, so in Asheville, I do a lot of work with street performance. Meaning, I shake my fist a lot when... I feel like street performance is getting pushed aside because street performance, playing music on the street is super important to me. I feel like it saved my life. It definitely is why I'm the spoon lady now. And I feel like it's a really, really important thing. More, more and more often, more and more cities are outlawing street performance or they're over-regulating it to a point where the culture shuts down, okay? So, you know, I'm going to preface what I'm going into with that so that you understand where I'm coming from. Um, you know, this being said, we need to understand exactly what is busking or street performing. Busking is just another word for street performing. And, you know, in... Another thing you need to realize, although there is a busking culture and folks who refer to themselves as buskers, busking is not a type of performer. It's actually an action. You know, many, many performers who book in venues and, and bars and, and other kinds of things um, also go busking. And like, for example, um, you know, if you're playing on public property, for tips, then, you know, that's busking. If you are playing on somebody's private patio and they say, hey, can you come play for tips? That's still not busking. It just means you're playing music for free. Busking happens on public property. Okay, so this this being, being the thing. Um, the situation in Asheville... Uh, there used to be a lot of really, really, um, you know, nice acoustic bands kind of set up pretty consistently. The more as time has gone on and the more tourism has come into Asheville, the less space that those bands have had. And now uh, those bands have crowds that are in the street. And so there's not a lot of space for those crowds anymore. And so those bands have kind of hovered off to a bunch of different places. And Asheville, because of that, has lost a lot of its street culture. A lot of the spaces that we used to use, we can't use in Asheville anymore because our crowds are in the street. And we're not doing anything different than we were when our crowds weren't in the street. Um, there's just more people. You know, more and more hotels are being built, more and more people are coming downtown. And that's just what it is. So, you know, this being said, I, I feel like this particular statue um, says a few things that maybe it wasn't intended to. 
Um, this statue is called Ode to Busking. Um, the artists are really, really sweet, awesome people. And I want to I wanna say that right away. Uh, Chuck Bersima and Ashley Knight. And Chuck is the guy who made the drum part at the bottom. And Ashley Knight is the one who made the figures on top. The figures on top are a spoon player, a washboard player, a fiddle player, a jug player, um, and a tub player. And with talking to Ashley Knight, he told me he, he did model the, the spoon player after me, and it was very, very flattering. They worked really, really hard on this art. Now, this hotel that was put up, where this artwork is, Another thing that needs to be pointed out, this artwork is on public property and uh, uh, is on private property, I mean, and it belongs to the hotel. The hotel bought the artwork itself. It wasn't installed by the city. It was put in by the Eris Hotel. And so this particular spot, though, over the last year, street performers had started playing music there. Um... We've lost a lot of our spots. Some of the restaurants have stretched out and done outdoor dining because of COVID. And because of that, some of our performers had started using the space, which was set up like a stage, um, as a street performance spot. And our street performers in Asheville didn't know about this street performance statue that is supposed to uplift street performance until they were actively being moved off of this spot so that they couldn't play there anymore and so for a lot of people it feels as if the placement and who placed it it, it feels a little hypocritical um, meaning you probably should have left it to the actual live buskers because that's what Asheville is about and um, the hotel when it was put up uh, was told um, that they could they were given a choice actually by the city you could either put a statue in this spot or you could put a stage in this spot or you know like a performance area um, and they chose to put a statue of buskers in the performance area and fence it off so that buskers couldn't play music there anymore. So I, I'm not, I'm not understanding. Yeah, I don't know why not both. You know, had, had, the hotel didn't talk to our, we have, we have like a street performance group. The hotel didn't necessarily talk to our street performance group about our thoughts on the situation, like, or like what we thought about it. Um, in which they don't really have to. Again, it's 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 their property. Um, but, you know, it, again, it's private property. Um, but it feels as if, if they had asked us, we would have asked them to please leave it there so that we can perform. You know, put a mural up. You know, there are many different kinds of art where we can share the space that would be appropriate. And um, then we can still uplift artists because it's important to uplift um, artists. You know, I mean, these artists uh, are, are really awesome guys that put this together. I mean, they are. They aren't part of any of the politics that go along with this. They were just, you know, they were commissioned to, new, to do an art piece, you know, and, and so congratulations to them. You know, so, but I, I, I can't, it, even, even when... I take into consideration that it's that it's private property and not public property. Even when I take that in, into consideration, because of the subject matter of the statue, I feel as if I feel as if you can't get around the hypocrisy. And and it's a little bothersome, I guess. And I don't know. I don't know if y'all have thoughts on that. Uh, you know, and to tell you the truth, you know, the hotel themselves, uh, when COVID was happening, and I do want to make this clear, um, when COVID, because I don't want it to be all bad about the hotel either, um, 
But when COVID was happening and there weren't a lot of folks walking around, we had a lot of street performers kind of pulling their hair out, wondering what they were doing. And the hotel set up and paid folks that were out street performing to do live streams during that time. And they were very, very kind to them. And I wanted to make that clear that the hotel did do that. And that was really, really awesome. Um, they are actively uh, booking musicians on their front patio, which, which doesn't bother any of our buskers. That's, again, that's, that's their private property. Um, and some of the, the, bus, the folks that are playing on their patio happen to go busking sometimes, which is awesome. Um, you know, that he's, that he's bringing in people from the community like that. And he seems to be paying a decent living wage to the folks that are there. So I, I just wanted to put that out so, so that y'all understand that it's not just, you know, all negative with them. Thank you, Thomas Smith. I appreciate that. You know, so, so I, I, I do wonder sometimes whether or not, you know, I, it's hard to get around the irony. I don't know. I don't know. That's been my week. I'm trying to figure out exactly, I, I feel like I'm in a weird situation about it because, I mean, the artist put so much heart and effort into it and I can't, I can't dumb that down at all because they're, they're just really great people and it's awesome. It's awesome that they thought of us like that, the artists, um, but you can't get around the irony and um and some of our buskers some of the buskers in Asheville are upset about it and um i get it you know i i get it but you know if anybody ever is you know in a city where they're doing street performance at all you know i i've gone gone and done talks with cities before about street performance policy or how to make things better or how to you know juggle public space like that if anybody you know ever is in a situation with your city where you feel like you would want some advice i'm more than happy to help i've helped out in chattanooga ocala florida um also pensacola all sorts of places you know so you know just putting that out there. <laughs> oh, thanks everybody for hanging out with me. It's nice to be able to talk about that for a second because yeah, it's kind of it, it's kind of bugged me a little bit. I went to the unveiling. I didn't really know how to th what to think, and I and I felt really strange. I, I, Folks are asking, how can we help? Um, uh, as far as the statue is concerned, I think right now, um, right now we're just trying to, you know, balance everything out with the hotel and make sure that everybody can become friends in a community again. It's really important for everybody to get along. And so that's what we're going to do there. We're going to try to get along and figure out what to do. That is their private property. You know, you know, although it would have been nice and it would have been the, 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 the thing to do, um, they aren't legally obligated to ask our opinion. So it is what it is. Um, well, I, I'll tell you as far as like writing nice letters, what would be helpful is, is, as far as Asheville City Council, if anybody is interested, uh, I believe if you check the Asheville City Council website, and I'll look it up here in a little bit, if you, th there's like an email where you can email them all at once uh, to make it easy, but, but asking City Council to make sure to create larger spaces for street performance, that way we can get some of those those jug bands and jazz bands back to Asheville, because right now we've 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 lost a lot of them. Every now and then, we get one coming through, and it's sweet. It's awesome. Um, but a lot of folks are just like, you know, 
it's just not enough space there. And that and the volume's gone up, you know, not not just street performers, but bars and things. And I don't know if all of y'all know this, but I used to be the Nashville street performer or Nashville spoon lady. And I pretty much watched the same thing happen to Nashville, what's happening to Asheville, in, in which, you know, they're just more and more tourists, more and more tourists, and, you know, and I kept telling people, you know, we need to make sure that we can keep street performance a thing in Nashville, and folks just kept telling me, oh, well, they're never going to outlaw street performance in Nashville. Well... In Nashville, Tennessee right now, you know, at, at, at first it was, it was, they were started chasing off the bands that were, that were gathering crowds, right? And so the crowds that were, that were so large, you know, you know, cause there were just so many people and the crowds just kept getting bigger and bigger, you know, and so public safety is an issue. People need to be, be able to get down the sidewalk with wheelchairs, things like that. And they need to be able to use the cross cuts on the sidewalk. We need to be mindful of those things. And so those things being said, um, at, instead of creating space, they just started chasing off the bands that could create crowds. And then they were left with walk by acts, which some of them are very, very good. Please don't get me wrong. It's not a talent thing. But they were left with walk by acts and and with um, uh, you know folks that you know only had like two strings on their guitar and things like that, and so then we would go to you know talk to folks about uplifting street performance in Nashville, Tennessee, and they would be like, oh, well, the street performers are terrible. And we're like, well, you, you chased off all all the the bands that were secure, you know, and um, and so it was kind of kind of frustrating with that um you know and so now they didn't necessarily make street performance illegal on broadway they are they do actively chase off bands that create crowds again we need to be mindful of people in wheelchairs and things like that that is just a thing and if you are if you are the street performer that means you are in charge of your own crowd right um so, um, you know, and that's it, you know, if you're gathering in the crowd, you're, you're the one. But, um, you know, the thing is with, with Nashville, they didn't necessarily make it illegal. They, they made it illegal to busk within 15 feet of a loading zone and then turned all of Broadway into a loading zone. So they just kind of pick and choose now. And, um. And it's kind of hard, but I think it's okay. Uh, I'm gonna look at some of these comments here, so give me give me just a moment so I can go back. <laughs> Thanks everybody who's hanging out with me and talking to me. We got Louisiana here. How is Willie? Willie's doing good. He's sleeping. Willie, say hi. Where's Willie? Okay. Where else we got? We got... Awesome. There's so many people here. That's awesome. Hi from Ohio, Michigan, Missouri, Wilmington. Gary Huffman. I'm trying to look up to find your other comments so I can... Here, talk to me, Gary. Okay, um, thanks everybody for hanging out and, um, chilling with me. I appreciate letting you know, let me unload some of this, you know, and, and I do want to say again, you know, although this has kind of been strange for some of our street performers with this statue and stuff, um, some of the Asheville politics Facebook pages are kind of going off about some of this, and, um, but these artists are awesome people. They are awesome people, and, um, and, you know, they were commissioned to do this piece, you know, and they, they don't have anything to do with these politics. 
they genuinely were, were making this art from their heart, and I do believe that. Um, so I did want to, to say that, you know, because I, I think it's, it's, it's really important to say that. <laughs> um, and I think, I think, I think I will always be a street performer, you know, no matter what I'm doing, I will always want to go out and play music on the street because I love the give and take of it, you know, you, I, you know, you, you make more money doing shows, you make more money doing venues and festivals, street performance though, you know, you, when you get that line of kids that are like sitting in front of you, cross-legged, you know, just hanging out, listening for a few songs, eating their ice cream cones. That, that is what's awesome. You know, or you get the little kid who wants to come up and like hit the, hit the bells, you know, and do all that with you. That is priceless. That's what I love. I love the give and take. I love all of it. Oh, I see Yuli's there. Yuli is one of our buskers and she's awesome. She plays in, in Asheville and she is great. <laughs> um, Gary Huffman, how do I contact you? Uh, I'm going to put down an email, and if you send me one out, I'll check it before I go to bed and write you back. Okay? Um, but I'll send you a specific one. There, I put it in the uh, comments there. So... Yeah, so our street performers in Asheville are awesome, and street performing in general is is great. Okay, I see your email. I'm going to copy it. Thank you. Thank you, Gary. All right, so. Sorry, folks. Doing a little business here with Gary. and try to get up with him. And I do sometimes get hard to, to get a hold of. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, guys. Um... Sometimes they get a lot on my plate and I have to shut it off so that I can do other things. I'm trying to do a lot of writing and I'm, I'm trying to finish some books and stuff. So um, please forgive me if, if you've been trying to contact me. I, you know, it's okay to, to email me twice or three times. You are not bugging me. I'm sorry. <laughs> Just, okay. Just getting that out of the way. Hello from Dallas. Um, so... That's awesome. All right, so what else do we got going on? What else do we got going on? Um, yes, books. And, and I did put together a um, kid's book about street music. But, oh my goodness. Um, Thomas Smith, thank you very much. That's, that's gas money. That's awesome. It's really awesome. Thank you, Taylor. That's awesome. Oh, I have my other dilemma I will tell you about. Uh, I have a storage unit in Asheville, and I was trying to get all my stuff back to Kansas. And I came out here with Tub and Dusty, right? But um, they're getting their own vehicle, which is good for me, because now I get a little more space. And I'll tell you what I'm going to use the space for after this, but because it's pretty exciting, too. But they're getting their own vehicle, and Tub can't drive because he has really bad eyes, you know, or whatever. And um, and so Dusty was going to drive the U-Haul back, but now I'm not going to have anybody to drive the U-Haul back, so, I, so now I'm kind of juggling that. Um, but I'll, I'll figure that out, right? I think, I think. But, um... What I'm going to use the extra space for. So right now I've got like a wash tub base. And I've got all of all of Dusty and Tub stuff in the back. And once that is out and in the, their vehicle. I have bought a really nice trunk. And I have a couple of, of kick pedals. And I am going to start kick pedaling. While I'm playing spoons. And doing, um, you know backbeat with my with my feet and I'm a little nervous about getting to it but I think a little muscle memory and I will be able to accomplish anything so that is what I'm going to be using the space for and I am super excited to start doing that I also had another project I was working on 
where I bought a, you know, those old fashioned telephone boxes. They have like two bells on them. And then they would have the wire coming out with the, with the phone like this. And I bought one of those boxes and it has a motor in it for, for the bells, right? I don't know if the motor works. I don't know if I would need to get a new motor. But then I found a couple of other bells that have motors like that. And I think that I could probably put holes with buttons around it and make a box where I could push the buttons and make the bells go off and maybe do that with my toes. I don't know if anybody thinks that that's a strange idea or not. But, uh... I figure maybe I could teach myself to do some basic wiring. I I think. I mean, YouTube, you could learn anything on YouTube. You can even learn how to play spoons. <laughs> I just, I, I'd like to be able to, to use my feet a little bit more. And I feel like I'm, I'm missing out. I mean, that's half my body. I should be able to use that, so... Um, I'm going to be doing that, and I think Dusty was talking about maybe doing a kick drum too, so that every now and then we could do like, boom, 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 you know, like, together. I think that'd be pretty cool. Like, breakdowns and stuff, I don't know. I'm just brainstorming here, I guess. <laughs> I just, you know, if it doesn't work, you just change it up until it does, right? <laughs> That's my thought. All right, I've been on here for 26 minutes. So, uh, here, uh, I'm going to start my coffee. Because I'm going to have a little dessert cup. And read a little bit of a book before I go to bed. Hey, thank you, Linda. Goodness. Um, you're awesome. So tonight, tonight I'm going to have a little bit of coffee. And I got me some down home sweet sugar cubes, you know, like brown sugar cubes, you know. And that's the way to go. So that's that's my dessert coffee. That would be great. Alright, anybody got any questions, comments, concerns before I sign off? I'm going to be watching the comments here for a second, just in case. Thanks everybody again for hanging out with me. It's been really nice to, to get some of this stuff off of my chest. And I need to be doing live streams more often. I get so busy and, and things like that. And to tell you the honest truth, sometimes I get a little... I get a little strange as far as, you know, being on the internet so much. The whole internet thing kind of weirds me out. And I know it seems like maybe I'm, I'm on there a lot, but... I, I have a hard time with it. it says, uh, Linda Mon says, uh, when are you back in Kansas? Um, well, my birthday is coming up on October 29th. And so I was thinking about sticking around here until the end of, the, end of that. But uh, I might, you know, wait to see if I could find somebody home and get that U-Haul back to Kansas. Um, if not, I might just drive the U-Haul back and then, you know, rent a car back. I mean, that's cheap. To get the school bus or whatever and take my leisurely time home you know maybe stop and visit some some cool lookout points or I don't know sites I don't I don't know what is there to do in a COVID world now a lot of stuff's closed <laughs> please wear shoes everyone <laughs> I think she's starting to try, try to start fights with me right here, huh? Huh, Delora? <laughs> um, got bit by a rattlesnake? Wow. He's sitting on the outer banks. That's awesome. Oh, we don't want you to have to quarantine, Tammy. Um, I'm sure I'll figure it out. I'm probably going to find a friend that, that wants to, that would have been hitching a ride with me anyhow that has a license probably is what's going to happen. Um, a traveler that happens to want to go that way. A lot of travelers have driver's licenses.
Would you play one little? Uh, I don't think I have anything out right now. I think everything's buried. I can do a live stream this week with the fellows, though, if y'all would like. If y'all would like that, the fellows are going to be around tomorrow. I think we're driving out to South Carolina. Our last show in the southeast is going to be in Iva, South Carolina, at a place called The Shady. Um, and then after that, we're going to be heading home. So I'll be in town until then. So, see, what can I do to entertain you for a moment? Everybody wants me to do something musical, but usually I'm playing along with somebody, so... I'm trying to figure out what I can do. I can play some on the saw. What's my earliest memory of music? Ooh. Okay. The er my earliest memory of music. My mother. My mom is really, really musical. And she did a lot of like music theater and she played piano, and I remember her playing piano when I was little. My sister, my older sister, she played stand-up harp also. Um, you know, but when I was a kid, I would go through my parents' CDs a lot. And my parents listened to um, a lot of real classical stuff, and my dad was a big Willie Nelson fan. So a little bit of a mix there. Um... A lot of the stuff that was on the radio when I was growing up wasn't really my cup of tea. Except, now, this is something that's really important and a huge influence on my life. And that's that my, my very first concert was the Monkees. And Weird Al Yankovic came out and sawed Davy Jones in half on stage. Weird Al Yankovic opened up for the Monkees. And I remember Davy Jones came out and he had this neon green wig on, like super tall neon green wig. And it was just like the craziest thing and that, that was embedded in my mind. <laughs> Your first concert was Willie Nelson? Oh, see, that's sweet. You know, but, you know, I, my, mine had Weird Al Yankovic, you know, that's pretty cool too. <laughs> ACD <laughs> That's awesome. Murdo Yankovic was was hilarious to me. You know, and and a lot of those like real silly things I think were big influences in my life. There was a lot of really dumb stuff that was on TV when I was a kid. And I don't know if y'all rem remember that really that really idiotic TV show called Jackass. You know, they would like put people in shopping carts and roll them real fast down hills and stuff and like do all this like kind of dangerous stuff. But I remember like watching this. I remember watching this and sitting there going, that's what I want to do. And not like roll myself down the hill in the shopping cart. I don't want to do that, you know, but but to me it felt like these were folks that were doing what they wanted to for a living. And I was like, you know, that's what I want to do. I want to do something that's fun. I want to be myself for a living. You know, and, and growing up and understanding show business and all the stuff that goes into it, I understand now there's a lot more to it than that. You know what I mean? Like, behind the scenes, what was going on with them. But um, when I was a kid, that was... That was, like, so interesting to me, you know, and, and that was, I don't know, that was pretty influential to me. I don't, it was kind of a, I don't know. But what TV shows did you guys like? Because I remember when I got my first TV that was, let, like, myself, like, in my bedroom, and I was so excited, you know, because it was, like, my TV, it had, like, a big tape deck that was, like, attached to it, you know? You know? And, um, I would stay up all night and watch Nick at Night. And so it was, like, I Dream a Genie. And then, and then, um, what was it? Donna Reed would come on. 
And then late at night, it would be like Alfred Hitchcock and all of that kind of stuff. It was awesome. Thundercats is awesome. That's what my phone ringer is on. Uh, like, the Thundercats theme is my phone. phone. Sorry. <laughs> Another funny Spoon Lady fact. <laughs> Oh, man. <laughs> oh, they're in Brazil. That's awesome. Yeah, Salina, Kansas. Oh, where do you think I should be booking in Salina? Is there a small theater or, like, an outdoor something? Or, I don't know, that would be okay for that in our current condition? There probably is. I should look. Um, Romper Room is awesome. I love these comments. Alright, you know, okay, so another thing, and I hope somebody steals my idea. So this, this is a free one to steal if somebody wants to steal this one. I think somebody should do, like, a YouTube version of, of, um, of, like, Mystery Science Theater. Except do it to YouTube videos, like music videos and YouTube videos, and have it be like a punk kid and then a cowboy, you know what I mean? Like all the social stereotypes that are out there today. I think it'd be hilarious to do that to like current YouTube videos. I would love to do that to my friends' music videos so bad. So bad. <laughs> Somebody steal my idea, please. Please steal my idea. <laughs> I also, okay, I'm going to throw one more idea out there before I go and that somebody else can steal. Um, and that is, and I always thought that the guy who did Sharknado should do this one. Because it would be, the Sharknado guy especially should do this one. I do not have a TikTok, although I probably should. Um, okay, but the Sharknado guy, he needs to do this one. So if you're out there listening, somebody send this to him, I don't know. Um, but I think there should be, like, a mad scientist who cross-pollinates kudzu with a Venus flytrap, and, um, and then it, like, starts taking over, like, way super fast. It starts eating people. I think that needs to be, like, a really crazy, like, B-film that that guy makes. Especially. I think the Sharknado guy needs to do that. <laughs> alright, alright. Let me look up here and some of these comments before I run off. We got Phoenix here. That's awesome. My friend Matt Kimmon's going to be floating around Arizona soon. I'm hoping he's booking. When will you be in Iva? Okay, so yeah. the la Again, the last show... Thank you for asking. That's awesome. Um... The last show that we have in the southeast before I go to try to find a way to drag all my stuff back to Kansas is October the 16th in Iva, South Carolina. So that is in a couple of days, two days from now, and that's in Iva. And it's going to be safe. Everybody's going to have their space and, and all that. We made sure that it's going to be a safe, a safe place. And... Um, I think it's going to be a great show. I'm excited about it. I've been excited to be able to play something. I've been missing it. And I have not been street performing because I, I haven't been out gathering crowds. And so, um, you know, but the other guys have been street performing. The other guys in the band, Tub and Dusty, they've been street performing. And so I, I feel a little left out, but it is what it is. And so... You know, I'll get back to it when it's safe to do so, or, you know, when, when the local authorities say it's okay, or whatever, you know, I'll get back to it eventually, I'm feeling positive, just chill out. <laughs> what do we got going on, soupy sales? 3D glasses and swamp thing? Yes, I played... Swamp Thing was filmed in Ocala, and I, I played a private party in that park. They gave us this, like, open glass bottom tour. It was, it was pretty interesting. It's actually kind of neat, but they have, like, 
bunch of monkeys running around with herpes or something. It, it's weird. Google it. It's, I don't know. Um, <laughs> Howdy Doody Time, yes. Lassie was a good one. I liked Lassie. And I, I would watch that at my grandma's house because that would come on. She would grow like two acres of green beans and can all these green beans. And so my cousins would come and we, we'd spend all this time picking all these green beans and knee high in chiggers. I'd have to like take baths and tomato juice to try to get rid of chiggers. And um, I'd sit there with this big basket in front of me and snap green beans and we'd watch Lassie and Murder, She Wrote, and then Jeopardy, and then The 700 Club. I think, like, in that order. <laughs> and then my grandpa would always listen to Paul Harvey. Good day. Whenever he was out milking goats, he had a bunch of goats. And they were all, all milking goats. He would take them to goat shows in, in Oklahoma and stuff, you know, and for, for blue ribbons and stuff. Pretty cool. <laughs> I haven't been busking in Asheville right, right currently. But um, right now there's still one spot that's large enough to gather a crowd. And that would be at the Flatiron Sculpture. And so as soon as... as um, City Council says it's okay for me to gather a crowd there. I will. Um, Makita Gut, thank you for your art. I recently found your videos and are a source of joy. Thank you so much. Hey, here, here, here. All my bells are in the back. I need a... Wait, wait, I have this one. If you want to see... These, these bells are cool. If anybody knows where to find more. But, um... I don't know if you see these... These are actually from old carnival ride, or a carnival thing, like a fair thing, and you throw sandbags on them, you know, they go, when you hit them. I don't know. I stuck them up on the bus. I thought they were awesome. <laughs> Dress it well, man, vintage. Lawrence is awesome spot. Lawrence is awesome. And, and folks, everything in Asheville is safe right now. Uh, like, I've, I've seen some comments and some of the Facebooky stuff saying, you know, it's all, it's all violence. There's, there's no tourists. It's fine. It's safe. I've been walking around at night late with my dog. It's fine. Please do not worry. You know, so if you're driving through, please don't be scared to stop. Everything's chill here. It's fine. You know, and just Spoon Lady approved. All right, folks, I've been on here a little longer than I needed to, so I've really got boxcar children books. See, you're just throwing stuff out that make it so I'm staying on. Thanks, Tracy. Here I am, trying to go to bed. You're keeping me up, talking about stuff that I love. Man, I loved those books. I loved them. I like Nancy Drew, too. The Nancy Drew books were great. Those are awesome. All right, I really got to go. I really got to go. Like, for real. I love you.